Yeah, greetings, people. Doc Martin here. Well, today's show, we're going to be looking at something really interesting. Um, as an academic, um, I hear this discussion so many times around the issue of identity, cultural identity, political identity, social identity. So it's really, really good to have someone who wants to come onto the show and look at this issue and talk with me and rap with me for a while. Um, I'd like to welcome to today's guest, Setaru Bay. I hope I've said it right, yeah? Yes, yeah. No, I hope I have, because if, if I've said it wrong, I know you're going you're gonna to look at me bad. Um, Bredrin, Setaru, good to see you here. Um, before we get into any chat business, tell me a bit about who you are. Okay, well, peace, hotep, shalom. Islam, everybody. My name is uh, Sefru Bey, and I'm a, I would say, one of the first Moorish nationals of Albion slash England. That, no, uh, no, wait, let, me, let me stop you there, because you said a lot there. You know, you said Moorish nationals, Albion, because remember, somebody might be listening to think of West Bromwich Albion. So just, you need to unpack that one. Okay, okay. Basically, um, I'm a Moor. Moorish is my nationality. And I'm domiciled in the land of Albion, which is the ancient name for England. Okay, so how did this all come about? I mean, you know, was he, did you wake up at the age of 12 and say, that's what I'm going to be? Give me a little bit about your journey to, to becoming the person I'm talking to now. Well, my journey has been mainly been on a spiritual level from, um, you know, I could recall from going or being told to go to Catholic school from being in a Catholic church, sorry, from being in a Catholic school. When did that start? When did that start? I mean, when you was... That was a, when I was... Did, did you grow up a Catholic? I wouldn't say I grew up a Catholic, but because we went to a Catholic school, you know, we had to attend the masses and the the procession that they do usually. In, so so when did you begin to question that then and say that's not for you? Uh, when uh, I was reading some books, because whenever I get into something, I get into something. And then when I found that nothing actually identified with my skin colour or heritage that came from the actual religion itself. Did I take it, do I take it that you grew up in a school where you was in a minority at the school? Uh, it was a mixed school. It's, um, I don't know if um, I should mention it. St. Clair's. It was, was a multicultural school in Birmingham. So what, what is it about the school experience where you suddenly said, nah, this, this don't feel right? Well, um, it was more so after when they left, when you had the opportunity to, you know, search and learn for yourself and question things. And it's actually when I've made my own independent travels there. Well, how did you do that? Because, you see, I've got kids and I lecture at university. And, you know, for a lot of my students, like the idea of going to the library or youths nowadays, you know, if it's not on Facebook or YouTube. So can you just talk a little bit about... Did you go to the library? Did you did you go into a bookshop? I mean, where did you start the journey to of discovery? Well, one of the discoveries was actually when this is after the Catholic, the, the Catholic period. When I, when I was arrested, I got arrested and I was in jail, and I actually took the time to actually read the Bible, and then re- taking the time to read the Bible made me question a lot of things that was in the Bible. Questioning. Um, just on that little bit there, because I'm a criminologist, and so obviously a lot of people say, you know, prison don't work. But did prison give you a space to read? You know what? Me personally, I can only speak for myself. Prison, for me, was something that I personally needed, so it would sort of, for lack of a better word, give me that push or motivation to not be here ever again and to not waste the time and opportunities that I have. Did you, when you got the Bible though, was it a Bible somebody gave you or did you go down the prison library? I went down the prison library myself because, you know, so-called black families all grow up with this Christian indoctrination and um, it was the thing that I could identify with at the time. So basically he did what Malcolm X did because he went to jail, he, he read the dictionary, he had a conversion in there. I mean, so, so would you say that jail was the start? For you. Yeah, it was definitely the start of, of learning, also realising the injustices meninated people or Moors faced like myself. So you get released, you come out of jail. Take us through a little bit of that journey just post-release. Um, well, it was a thing where a lot of reflection on myself and what 
I have and haven't learned, and the fact that up to that point, my um, mid twenties, I was very resentful towards anybody to do with academia, school, because so would you, would you say you educated me from the day I was in nursery to the day I left secondary school. So, so you was vexing. Um, yeah, I was how did frustrated. You, how did yeah. you? How did you express the frustration? Did you? Did you do graffiti? Did you go climbing mountains? Did you? How did you express your anger at that time? Um, I would have probably expressed it like a lot of a young youth partying, you know, um, alcohol things like that. Just... Would you let me let me ask a question on that? Because critics would argue that. Was you in denial about what was going on? So you just zoned out because you didn't want to face what was going on? It was more of um, not knowing what to do, no support network because my father wasn't around either and no peers to point you in a positive direction. So the way the the surroundings where I grew up, everybody was basically miseducated too and given a false reality of what is to expect when you leave school because my experience of in school is they are there to train potential slaves for the future not to be productive members of society who know law and can defend themselves because you don't learn law in school you don't learn self-defense and you don't learn how to be productive or an owner yeah but to go from on the road, angry, upset, disaffected, lost, and then suddenly ending up where you become a champion for human and civil rights and you start to read. I mean, what what was the tipping point? What happened? Um, well, it's sort of reckon... There's a few things that I've... Whether it's um, YouTube videos I've come across, um, people like, um, you know... The, Dr. Valentine. Uh, so you started to edu- you started to re-educate yeah, yourself. Started to educate myself. Yeah, but how did that how did that get into your consciousness, and how did that start to affect your behaviour? Because I realised first and foremost, we didn't have no identity. We didn't who know who we were. Also, I recognised that we was as melanated people more. As we've been under attack since thousands of years ago, since Scipio Pablo. Scipio Publius, if I pronounce that name right, landed on landed in Carthage to invade the shores of West Africa. So let me ask you a question then, because again, for people listening, they're going to be curious about this. When you found out or you, you discovered things that you was not told, did you experience a second wave of anger like you'd been lied to for most of your life? Or what? how did you respond when you suddenly realised, hold on a minute, I've been waking up, I've been learning all this, and it's not true because I'm finding a different story. What was your initial emotional response to that? Um, to just challenge everything. I started to just challenge everything. So you become argumentative? I would say more... Um, they, would, they would use that term. It's a very strong term, a European term. Argumentative it sounds like it'd be negative. What did, what did I you, would challenge it more so. Did you have any white friends at the time that you stopped speaking to them because you suddenly discovered something different? Um... Now, now, even even saying the term white friends, I I, I've, I used to call them white, but I've realised I've never had white friends. White is just a status. How would you describe it then? White. Yeah, you know, you know, friends you went to school with. Oh, oh, Caucasian friends, English, Irish guys. So, how did you respond to them? Now you found this new information. How was you? Because if they knew you in your original, you know, your birth mm. name, and suddenly you're taking on this new identity, um, how did you reveal that? Well. It's a thing where I actually explain to them, you know what, I'm not mad at you guys who's grown up in my generation. You've been taught the wrong thing. For example, um, Brother Itamar uh, touched on in um, the National Front, the NF, which are a racial group. Now, I wouldn't actually say to them, go, oh, you know what, I need to create a, a counter group because you guys hate and I hate you and blah, blah. I will say, you know what, them... Gentlemen, them Caucasian brothers have been miseducated on who dark skinned, melanated, so called black people really are. And if they got to learn who we really are, rather than being miseducated like everybody else is, then we would get along a bit better. Well, that brings me on to the issue about identity, because obviously you, you've, got, you've got this new identity 
But obviously, that's going to affect people around you, like family, friends, brethren, going to a dumpling shop. When you was actually negotiating, this is the new you, practically, what were some of the barriers that you found? What were some of the difficulties when you suddenly took on a different name, a different identity? What were some of the problems that you faced? <laughs> the, the problems that I face is nobody wants me to talk about these issues and that's when I get into problems of, um, how can I say, presenting an argument to a company or, or an organisation. They they know that something is going on, but bec because I'm dealing with the, how can I say, the lower tiers, the minions of the executives, the executives and the bosses and further up know what, uh, exactly what I'm talking about in terms of identity law when you have a child and you as the informant give away your rights of the child and your rights when you sign birth certificate so you can have benefits from the state that's where it starts All right, let me, let me, let me come back to something you said you started with the interview you said you never got around your dad now I know we were speaking and you told me about your experience of fatherhood one of the most important elements of identity formation is the formation you have with significant people like parents. Before we talk about the cultural and the political identity, talk to me a little bit about the relationship between father and a child in terms of shaping some of your identity as a man. Well, that, that, that's a, another very important aspect of Moorish, melanated people's culture as well, because you have this story religious scripture of the trinity the trinity so the europeans say the father son and the holy ghost melanated people know it says mother father and child that's the unity and the importance of the father bonding with child from day one just like the importance of the baby having the mother's milk not formula the milk creating that bond Cutting off the placenta, creating trauma within the baby and have the baby having to produce more blood, more oxygen, have to struggle more to get those proteins, nutrients that you just cut off where nature provided. So a lot of things are to do with the culture of a society and how we, how, how we run it and how we live it because it starts from the youth from day one. There's been plenty of separation within the community, especially amongst so-called black men and black women, and that's purposely done to break up the family, to break up this important bond. Now, So from your, from your point of view, because you said you grew up without your dad, you went through a mm -hmm. period of trauma, like I did, like most of us do, like a lot of us do. Um, how did you do it, some of your own healing in terms of, did you get to a place where in order for you to be an effective father, did you have to forgive your own who was absent or did you blank him out? Because a lot of our youths will use the word waste man. But in some respects, your father may not be around. And obviously that experience has caused you to say, I'm going to be this.